Good afternoon, guys. Hope you're all having a great day. On today's episode, we are going to be making some custom parts for a race bike, but I'm gonna show you how to do your own carbon fiber projects at home. All right, so let me show you what we have. Today, we are working on a Gixxer 750, and this is a full-blown race bike. Say what you might, you know, there's straight line, fast drag bikes. There's great road course bikes, everything. You know, that's what I prefer but there's so many types of motorcycles out there, but let's give credit where it's due. So today we are working on a Gixxer 750. This is a full blown race bike. Um, now, unfortunately, I can't tell you all the details because this is a grudge bike, but this is what we're working on today is we have this tank cover here and this seat base here. Um, basically, it's just your seat with the foam taken off of it. And what we're going to be doing is this is just a plastic tank cover. Underneath this, there's actually no gas tank like on most Gixxer 750s. Um, and unfortunately, you might get glimpse and little sneak peeks, but I'm not going to show you all the goodies that are under the hood, if you would. Um, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be merging these two pieces. So basically, you have this panel that just sits in here like so. This is a gas tank cover that fits over what a metal gas tank would be right there. And you can see this bolts in here and then this bolts in here. Now this is supposed to fit snug, but because we're trying to save weight and get this bike down as light as we can get it, we're gonna be merging these two parts, making one piece, and then we're gonna basically finish it out like it would be you know, completely done, ready to go. It'll have the the uh, bump stop here, you know what I mean? So the rider does not, you know, slide too far back in the seat. And we are actually gonna take some of this tank down and get the rider as low as we can. So that way when, when he's full tuck on the quarter mile drag strip, he can get the most aerodynamic, just fastest time we can get out of the bike. All right, so now let's begin. We're gonna grab some fiberglass, some cloth, some mat, whatever we can use, find something to mimic that bump stop and uh, get starting cutting, make this one piece, and then we'll go from there. Before we kick off this video, I just wanna go ahead and give a second to thank Venom Carbon. Thank you guys, you are the best. They provide all the materials that we use on the channel, everything from epoxy resin, all the way down to infusion resins, chopped carbon. They have twill, they have plain weave, everything, and check out this sick new bi-colored weave they have in purple, red, blue, and many more colors to come. Thank you guys. Venom Carbon, you're awesome. Link down in the description below to buy yours. All right, so first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull this tank cover off of the bike. I'm gonna cut out that surround, that top part that you see there, and then we'll go ahead and start to get everything bolted and uh, see how we're gonna finish this into a one piece. All right, so as you can see, I have the top cut off of that part. Like I said before, I can't really disclose all the modifications to this bike because it is a grudge bike. So I've got that top off and now our goal is if you could see flush, what we're trying to do is basically plane this out as close as we can to make it to where the rider can lay down completely flat on this thing. And then on the back here, you can see we have this hard mounted and we're gonna build this up a little bit to make a little bump stop mount so they can't slide back. So now that I have it like this, I'm actually gonna take it off again, trim a little bit more, and then we're gonna keep that top part that's right over there, and we're gonna basically fit it on here and scale the tank down a little bit. So let me go ahead and trim some more off and I'll show you the next step. So we have the center piece, the piece that we cut out of the fiberglass tank cover is actually down here. I have it taped and angled you know, properly the way that I want it to where it's hard to see because I have the foil already, but it is perfectly straight. And I have that fiberglass cover underneath this foil. So I have this foil down on top so it doesn't stick and try to move my cover. And I have this all hard mounted. So now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the tank cover on here, kind of show you how I have it cut down and what we're working with. And I can show you just how we're gonna lay out kind of that first layer of glass on here. So now you can see a little better picture with the tank cover on there. Look at how much we cut down. He's gonna be able to lay flat on this thing. So now what I'm gonna do is instead of stuffing this or filling this with foam and shaping it, I'm actually gonna take foil and I'm gonna take tape and go to the edge and basically line by line, I'm gonna almost make like a suspension bridge to fill in this gap all the way to the one seat. So I'll go ahead and do that now and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here she is. 
Yes, it looks crazy, but let me explain to you what I was trying to talk about. So this has foil on the inner part, but not on this outer part. So now I have this tape kind of making, I don't know if you can see it, but more of a straight line, almost to the OEM style where it's cut down. See how we have that defined line? It's not just like a bubble. So now that tape keeps those defined lines. So now what we're gonna do, now that it's shaped properly, you can see we're building into the seat. Now I'm actually gonna take foil and I'm gonna cover everything. So we're gonna make like an outer skin that we're gonna end up making a mold and parts from. All right, the spaceship is done. No, I'm just kidding. We used the aluminum foil like this, like you've seen in other videos. We use this so we can basically make an outer skin out of carbon or fiberglass, which will then turn into the plug, which we will make a mold off of. But doing it this way, it protects everything underneath. And the rider can use this part, you know, after we make a mold and everything, it's really gonna be a carbon fiber piece. We're just making it backwards pretty much. So you can see we've got the little bump box here molded in and it is nice and low to where he will be able to get right over it. It looks like a mess right now because it's all aluminum foil, so I'm gonna press this down, and then we're actually gonna get ready to lay up some little strips of carbon. All right, so I can't express it enough. This is why I love Venom Carbon, because they don't only sell like really, really nice cosmetic carbon, but they have like blim stuff too that has a little bit, you know, a little imperfections, not something you'd want to use as like your final coat, but this stuff is awesome and a hell of a lot cheaper than ruining your very pretty, very expensive carbon to do stuff like this. So what I've done is I cut up a bunch of, you know, one to two inch by two inch squares and then some medium to larger ones, because the first thing we're going to do on this is we're going to put all the little patches, if you would, around the hard, sharp edges. And then once we get one to two layers of that, then we can start putting some uh, heavy fabric over everything. So let's go ahead and get done. All right. This is our second, well, technically third layer, because I did all those little strips that I cut off earlier. So everything's reinforced on all those joints and everything, but we're actually gonna do uh, basically three layers like this. So this one is ran long ways, and then I'm gonna run sheets over this way, overlapping. So that way it builds up strength and rigidity. We'll do an extra layer in the seat pan in the bump stop, and then we will do a final layer over everything. So let's go ahead and mix up another batch of resin and we will get it on here and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now we have the first flow coat on there starting to take shape. You can see it always looks ugly before it looks better, trust me. But now you can see just how much we were able to take down and still keep it kind of OEM-esque. So we'll let that cure and then we will do a couple more huge layers of uh, carbon to go over this. Oh, look at that. Guys, it is the next day. I just pulled this off the bike. And I just wanted to show you how it's looking. It's starting to look like a part. Everything's nice and strong. Like I say, we're about six layers through. Now I'll pull out the cutoff wheel, get this trimmed up, get it looking like a part for real. And then we can go ahead and take a look at it. First rough fit. This isn't the final shape. I will go in and clean this up. All right, so I've made some minor changes and I've actually hole sawed where that seat pan was bolting right there. And I'm actually making like some buckets. Um, you know, like you see on most body work, they're like indent buckets that the bolt actually sits inset on. So the bolt's not on the outside kind of squeezing the body work. Um, and then also what I did was I made these little clevises out of bolts. So that way this will be like a quick release. So you'll literally put it on. You'll have two of these little RC car body pens um, that will quick latch the front and then you'll have two bolts holding it in. It'll be super sleek, super sweet. And I, I think it's gonna come out good. So I've got uh, those little parts over there. They're curing so we can put those buckets in right there and then we can get to the flow coat. All right, guys, we have the first flow coat on there. And if you're doing this yourself, don't worry about any kind of uh, bumps, you know, any kind of imperfections. It's always better to layer up a little bit more on the flow coat and cosmetic coat, because just like what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this up two layers of flow coat to where you'll see it'll end up being perfectly smooth, but then I'm actually gonna sand this down flatten it back a little bit just to keep the weight of all the extra resin off there and uh, get all the lines perfect, get it nice and smooth. 
and then we'll do one final thin layer of flow coat when it's all done and then that'll be a wrap all right guys we got the flattening stage all done as you can see it looks way ugly and i will tell you this is why i like doing these videos for you guys to show you quote unquote mistakes or things that didn't go to plan as you can see i got this shaped perfectly I mean, it's hard to see with all of the different spots, but it's completely level now, but you can see where it actually burnt through some of the carbon. So it's cool about doing like a reverse layup like this is we can just put another sheet of carbon on here because I literally sanded all of that flow coat that we put on down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some resin on there, let it tack up for about 30, 45 minutes, and then I'll take another piece of carbon, lay it over everything, and that will be our final stage. And doing it this way, it's a lot easier than if we were to try to not burn through the carbon and have to layer up more and more resin, sand it down, layer up, sand it down. Now that we sanded it down, burned through the carbon, knowing that I'm gonna put another sheet on there, I can actually do it easier and it's less time in the final stage because now we'll have one sheet of cosmetic final layer on here and then basically one to two flow coats at most, real thin and then this part will be done. We won't have to do any finish sanding besides any kind of like runs or, you know, like drips that we get around the edges, just like a final cleanup on the edges, but everything else will be good to go. What do you guys think? I mean, I know it looks ugly as hell right now, but when it's done, it'll look amazing. Well, I always like to be completely transparent with you guys, and this is why I make these videos. So we had another fuck up, um, unfortunately, I put the parts out in the sun, as you can see here. Beautiful, they look awesome. And then we had a cold night here in Florida where the temperature dropped like 25 degrees in an hour. And we got this like, uh, almost looks like contamination where it's little divots in the, the last coat of resin. Um, I'll show you here, you can see it. It's kind of hard to see in the photos, but as you can see, there's like little divots, little dimples, not what you want. You'd, you'd rather have a, 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 a peak than a valley because peaks are easy to sand and smooth and valleys are not. Luckily, we layered enough resin to where we were able to just go through and do a quick once over sand with it. It makes it even smoother and prettier like in between paint and clear coat the same way, like wet sanding it. So I made just a little change and I want you guys to tell me what you think. Well, boys, here she is. Ooh -wee. So as you can see, Tommy went with the carbon front fender, the carbon side panels all in gloss to match the custom tank. And then it's got the matte black primer on it right now that, I mean, what, what would you say? Like, <laughs> we're, we're leaning to the matte. It just looks so sick, guys. What do you think? He's got the little carbon bar that goes across in the front too that we're gonna install and this thing's gonna be cleaned up. Now, I don't usually do stuff like this. You know, we usually do builds and get them out, but um, let me know down below if you guys wanna see maybe a dyno video or see what this thing does on track. Like I say, I, I truly believe that this is gonna break the world record and be the fastest Jixxer 750 in the Southeast. Maybe the world. I, I'm definitely thinking the world. Thank you guys so much for watching. Links down below for the carbon fiber that we use and all the materials so you guys can do this stuff on your own. Subscribe. You know what to do. <laughs>